I wanted to share with you a little project that I did today in my art room. It's something that I've been toying with for a really long time. And I was blessed with the gift of a snow day today. So I was already at school when I found out that it was a snow day. So it was like the perfect time to make this idea happen. So instead of just being like, telling you about it and let me show you. So since the beginning of the school year, we've had to have our kids in a very specific order for contact tracing and making sure they are in that order, not only when they come to my room, but when they are in the instructional area as well as in their seats. So very specific spots to help make sure that we are always in our specific spot. We've got spots that are numbered and color coded both on the floor and the hallway where they stand to come into the art room and where they exit as well as at their tables. It's all very systematic and so like not how I normally operate, but it's been really great this year and I'm actually enjoying the organization. One thing I haven't been enjoying is how much those little fingers that can't pick at noses currently because hashtag mask, so they're picking at other things like the numbers on the floor. So my numbers on the floor didn't last very long and Pretty soon I was just like, y'all remember where you sit on the floor, so just come on in. Well, yeah, no. I know they remember where to sit. They know they remember where to sit, but there's a whole lot of, I don't remember where I sit. So I decided to go ahead and handle the scandal, take care of the situation, make it so I'm not sprouting more gray hairs than normal, and do a little bit of the following. I went ahead and got dry erase stickers for each spot on the floor. I this year started using dry erase stickers on the tables where my kids sit and work that way if they need to sketch something out or if we have early finishers with 30 minute art classes there's usually only a couple of minutes left they have a place where they can sit and draw since a lot of my centers and those kind of spaces where they would normally go are closed. Knowing how much they love these dry erase circles and how well they've been working in my room I decided to get them as seat spots for the floor. So if we ever want to play a game or we want to practice a drawing skill or again early finishers they can lay down on their little bellies and draw on that seat spot on the floor i'm hoping it works that's me saying a little silent please let that work because um yeah i'll keep you posted all right so here's a little bit of the bo before of my floor i mean it was a good idea in concept, but it was just construction pieces of paper with numbers on them that had tape on them, which eventually got picked off. So these dry erase circles I purchased, they've stuck really well to my tables, and I had some serious doubts about that. But um, as long as you really clean off the surface of whatever you're sticking it to and make sure it's nice and dry, it does a great job of sticking. So I just used a baby wipe and a little bit of a paper towel to get any of that residue off as well as some dancing. Because why not? Now that it's dry, when you peel the sticker off, it's important that when you lay it down, you kind of hold it like a letter U and then slowly lay down one side, smoothing as you go. That way you don't get little air bubbles trapped inside. I have a ton of air bubbles trapped inside of all of my dry erase circles. My students have never said anything about it. It doesn't really seem to affect the surface other than it's just a little bit lumpy and bumpy and aren't we all? So now that all of the circles were finished and I know this makes it look like I zoomed along really fast. It actually took far longer than I'd like. Then I decided to change each one of these circles into a color wheel. So these little circles I found online, they're just stickers. I'm pretty sure my custodian's not going to be thrilled with me, but they are laid out, each one stuck down in the order of the color wheel. I thought this would be a great tool for my students to use. That was one idea, but the big idea was this. I love dancing, you guys might be aware of that, but I wanna have more dancing in my art room, so I wanted to use this to introduce the Secondary Samba. The Secondary Samba is actually playing right now. You just can't hear it because I don't own the copyrights to it, but if you want to hear it, you should definitely check it out. It's a great song by Greg Percy. I found it on my Spotify. Basically, you find the primary colors, and then once you found the primary colors in the song, then you tap on the primary colors to make the secondary colors. For example, those two colors make orange, cha-cha-cha, red or yellow and blue make green, cha-cha-cha, and <laughs> Why can I not think of how to mix the colors? Those two colors make purple. Anyway, I plan on showing this little dance number to my students while we listen and learn the lyrics of the 
Secondary Samba by Greg Percy. So I'm really excited because it adds yet another component to these little seat spots. It also means they have a color wheel to look at when we're discussing color. I'm really excited to have my floor go from something like this, which was fine, kind of functioning, but not really, to this, which is super colorful. Not sure if it's actually going to work, but my fingers are crossed. I will definitely keep you guys posted. And by the way, if you are in need of some amazing art tunes, definitely check out Greg Percy. That one song that I shared is just one of the many. You can find them on Spotify. Thanks, guys, for letting me share, and I hope you have an amazing day. And if you get the blues, just just dance it out, y'all. Dance it out.